On today's episode, I'm joined by Joe Teelan and Matt Ritchie. Today we're discussing all things rifle hunting ammo. Now Hornady has a lot of lines of ammunition and sometimes that can be hard to figure out which one's right for you. So if you have a hunt for medium or large game and you're wondering what ammo you should choose, I think you'll find this podcast helpful. I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik. Joined today across the table, Matt Ritchie, Technical Services, Joe Thielen, Assistant Director of Engineering. Guys, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Seth. Pleasure. You can probably tell in my voice I'm a little bit excited. You know, we were talking before the podcast started recording here, and it's getting close. And when I say it, we're talking hunting. And uh, yeah, you start getting, like you'd mentioned, Joe, uh, into that end of July, start of August time frame. And stuff starts getting real. Well, you start seeing, you know, the the antlers are in velvet. You're starting to see stuff developing, maturing. Yeah, it's just, and now we get just a touch of a cold front. It's not 100 anymore. It's 80 and 60s in the morning. So you're like, oh, something's yeah. changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, I love that feeling. And Matt, you've got quite a drive into work and you come uh, rurally for the most part. So you get a chance to see, like Joe mentioned, the weather starts to change. Maybe the deer are moving during the hours of light. That's got to be nice. Yeah. They're out more in the bean fields and stuff like that and, and the road ditches, unfortunately, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. they're there. So you get, yeah, getting to see them and it's still a little bit light out. We're starting to get light out. So yeah, definitely gets you, uh, gets the, the heart rate up, gets the blood flowing. So. Yeah. And I know we've all got our, our, falls planned out here and uh we were talking again about this before we started recording but when you get to this time of year the training and the you know the exercise and the cardio and the whatever that just gets that much easier to do when you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and the light's not a freight train it's actually hunting yeah, season. and we're yeah. not looking for a carrot at the end you're looking for a buck or yeah, a bull yeah. or whatever it is yeah, you yeah. know i just yeah. can't get over that feeling of excitement it happens every year and you know uh uh the marketeers and I, Preston and Judd, we were joking here the other day. I feel like it's it happened just a little bit sooner than it did last year. Like I'm still the same level of excited. It just happened like a week early because uh, there's nothing like it. And it's electric throughout the office. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things I think uh, when I joined the team at Hornady was everybody gets excited about hunting season, you know, many months mm -hmm. in advance. And it just like wildfire spreads throughout the office. And that's really cool that we're still a small enough company that everybody here for the most part hunts and everybody gets excited about it. And to me that, that this makes you make better products, makes you innovate better products. It's absolutely I mean, Joe yeah. has a heavy hand in the R and D and you can probably speak to that, that it just, you care about what you're doing. Yeah. When you use the products that you design, build, work on, improve, whatever you name it. Yeah, absolutely. If you're going to use them. You want to use the best stuff for the job. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of best stuff for the job, Hornady is uh, the, the best purveyor of bullets that, you know, since we were founded in 1949, that was, you know, that was numero uno is yeah. we are going to be a bullet manufacturer. And we've branched into a lot of other things. And now we have, in my opinion, the best ammo available on the market topped with the best bullets available. And we've got a big line of ammo that spans rim fire to dangerous game and 50 BMG. Yeah. Well, what I want to focus on, and the reason I guys uh, have you guys on the podcast today is when we're talking rifle hunting, which is, you know, one of the most prolific manners to hunt in North America and across the world, we've got a lot of different options. So what I want to focus on is rifle hunting, medium game, you know, we're talking pigs, antelope, deer, up to large game, elk and moose, into dangerous game. And we've got something for everybody here, but when you look at our catalog, it can be a little daunting because we've got a lot of options. So, uh, Joe, obviously you have a in-depth knowledge of all of our bullets, all of our lines of ammo, and I uh, really appreciate your insight as we dive into that. And Matt, you have also an incredible depth of knowledge on our products, but you have the unique opportunity. You work in our technical services division. You get people calling up every year and saying, all right, I'm going on this hunt. What do I need? What bullet would you take? What yeah. What does Hornady recommend? And so I'm looking for your insight there as well. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are ready, let's dive on into this thing. Yeah, I let's think we it. should, definitely. 
So the, the first one that I, I want to bring up uh, is kind of what started the company, if you will, in its ammo was custom. So the, the purpose of this line was originally to get custom hand load performance from factory ammunition. Uh, using the best primers, brass, powder, and bullets that you can get and making an available factory load. So what is the custom line of ammunition today? So to me, um, on more of a looking at it from a technical side, the custom line of ammo is simply a lot of those cartridges out there, whether they're unique, different, um, obscure, maybe would be a, a good word, but they require a custom load. By the nature of the shape of them, the guns that are used in, the bullets, whatever, they, they, they need a quote-unquote custom load to get everything we can out of, you know, those cartridges in that line. Okay. Yeah. So they're loaded with a myriad of different bullets. Obviously, the bullet is going to be uh, the foundation or the cornerstone of that ammo, and we try to make sure that we pick the bullets that are intended for the purpose that they're loaded for. In this case, we're talking about hunting. Perfect. So right. it's a, uh, a kind of a smaller batch of ammo, if you will, smaller line of ammo that kind of catches those cartridges that don't really have a home elsewhere in a product lineup. Yeah, that's a, that's fair. Or they need or they need a custom loading. Okay. They, they need something unique that we we have to use a certain primer, uh, bullet powder, whatever it is that you know makes them a custom custom loaded. Perfect. They say custom load, but factory yeah. custom. Yeah. So when you're looking at the custom line of ammo from the cartridge and bullet availability, Matt, would you say this is more designed for that medium game? You know, the bullet weights are more appropriate for medium or is there some elk stuff in there as well? Um, I guess I would say more the medium game stuff, you know, um, kind of like the six, five by 55, those, those cartridges, oh, yeah. right? And I mean, that's yeah. kind of, you know, that's, that custom that, line. That is a good so, example. It's a very so, good example. So yeah, those are, they're, it's not. Not an ob a com completely obscure cartridge, but you know, speaking to the six five by fifty five, but one of those ones that's not as prevalent. And okay. so that's yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's where the the custom line comes in, and you know, cartridge at slower twist rate bullets are not not oh. a, the fast twist rate bullets that six we six Remington. You know, yep, six Remington yep. right there. That's another so, good one. Yep. Okay. Yep, so so if you're out there and you've got one of those cartridges with that, and, you, and we offer it in the custom line, and you're looking for antelope, deer, pigs, that kind of stuff, the custom is a perfect line of ammunition for you. And usually the custom line, just by the nature of its uh, design, development, and manufacture, is usually extremely inherently accurate. Okay. So that's something that the, the customer is going to look for yep. and should expect. Yep. Awesome. And they should expect that across all lines, but the custom specifically, we really do. I mean, bullet, like I said, we've been making bullets for you know over seven decades now, and we're pretty good at that one. So um, yeah, accuracy is paramount. So transitioning now from custom to the next line of ammo I want to talk about. Uh, the world of black rifles and that type of firearm has just exploded in obviously the last couple of decades and, and for good reason. And it is, it is America's rifle. Yeah. And we offer a line of ammunition now that caters to that. Now we, you can use it in anything that's properly chambered, but I'm talking about the black line of ammo. You know, we've got a bunch of different bullet options, but uh, from a hunting perspective, what does the black line offer? So the black line is obviously intended for the, you know, AR gas piston impingement type systems. And the, the best example I can use and why I think some of the popularity has grown is look at six millimeter arc, if mm -hmm. you will. You can take an 18 inch barrel, you know, gas impingement AR-15 six arc, thread a suppressor on it, put a reduced capacity magazine for whatever state you're hunting in, for like deer, and it's and collapsible stock in the back for youth or, okay. um, you know, smaller statured people. Like mm -hmm. my daughters use six arc in a gas gun to hunt deer with last year. And it works great. There's no recoil. The it's suppressor, quiet. it's quiet. Um, it's semi-automatic. So they don't have to worry about working the bolt, mm -hmm. you know, when you're hunting for a follow-up shot, if you need it. Okay. So the, that's kind of the overall, but the, the black is designed with powders, bullets, propellant, propellant uh, primers for gas guns. Okay. That's what it's designed for. Well, and I would like to add to even, you know, like hogs, you know, with the, the, the advancements of thermal optics, hunt, oh, night hunting, yeah. stuff like that, you're running, you know, run that black in those, a lot of guys are running ARs and, and suppressed and hunting at night, trying to get rid of a invasive hog 
population. That's a good point. You know, so like Joe mentioned with the propellant, a lot of folks are familiar with chamber pressure. You know, the the chamber, the maximum chamber pressure achieved in a cartridge. But the black line, we also keep an eye on port pressure, Mm -hmm. like you mentioned. Down door pressure, yeah, absolutely. uh, To cycle those actions, and then you put a suppressor on them, changes that dynamic. Well, we. We suppress the guns in house in the lab when we're doing all that development to make sure we don't have issues. Yep. Popping primers, building mm-hmm. excessive pressure because you got more back pressure with yeah. a can. So okay. Yeah. So the the black line, uh, catering to those gas guns, but again, certainly applicable. You know, I've shot the six Creedmoor 105 Boatail Hollow Point uh, black ammo through bolt gun six Creedmoor shoots great, uh, and so perfectly applicable for that kind of stuff as well. But again, catering towards the the AR line. Yeah. And- uh, if I, if I would add something too, especially on the black, since we've already covered custom and black, you know, we, we talk about, and this is a question we get in tech a lot, the 450 Bushmaster. Mm-hmm. We have a black line and we have a custom line. Oh, good point. Thanks right? for bringing that up. So what I, I guess what I try to point out to everybody is the fact that, you know, we match the ballistics. It's the same bullet, but it's the, the difference really is the propellant from the black to the custom. So that's, a, that's the confusion, or at least a call we get, guys get confused and don't know. What do I use? Well, yep. they both work, but if you have an AR and a 450 Bushmaster, and we're going to steer you towards the black line just because of how those propellants are de- designed to work in that gas system. Yeah, so. perfect. And that 250 grain FTX that sits on top of there, I mean, you talk about a slug. Bumper. <laughs> that, Bumper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, the, the next uh, line of ammo as we kind of progress through this, I'm going to call this the the pipe hitter for, for lines of ammo. I mean, this thing... This next line of ammo is so utilitarian, and there's a load in there for for just about every common gun you're going to see mm-hmm. uh, out there, and that is the American Whitetail line. Yeah. So obviously the name implies what it's likely for, but uh, reading between that line, what uh, what are we looking at with the American Whitetail? So the first and foremost to me is the bullets that are loaded in that, and they are the tried and true, made them for decades interlock spire point projectiles mm-hmm. and those bullets are there is a reason those bullets have been made for 90 whatever years we're on now yeah. is because they just work they're reliable they shoot well um they're versatile use them for a, a white tail at 20 yards you can use them for a antelope at 250 yards a deer at 300 yards they just yeah. work really really well yeah, the exposed lead tip, and what other features are in that uh, interlock bullet that make them so universal? Well, I mean, it's going to be, you know, um, they've got a cannula, so you can cramp if you're reloading, um, or if we're, t- we're talking about ammunition, but that interlock to where that controlled expansion. But the yeah, skiving think- in the nose, the inner grooving, the mm-hmm. skiving mm-hmm. in the nose to get them to open up. Consistently, Consistently upset, yeah. okay. Yeah. And you talked about that interlock ring. That's something we've been doing for a decades Mm -hmm. and it's just that little barb is the best way i can explain it inside the jacket and then when you uh, swedge that lead core in there that copper barb is gouged into that lead and it mechanically holds on to the lead so like joe mentioned we skive the nose so it uh, expands pretty rapidly but you're not going to flow as much lead because it's getting squeezed Mm -hmm. and that cantler actually works to help squeeze that lead too so for traditional range performance inside of 400 yards you can't really beat a classic interlock exposed lead tip bullet. I don't no, know. You, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you could put a number on the number of deer have been <laughs> killed with a hundred grain boat tail spire point out of a two forty three. Oh yeah, that's got to be one of the more iconic, <laughs> so, you know, white tail or combos. Thirty thirty one seventy or three oh eight one fifty. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, thousands. Yeah, millions that, probably. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's got to be. I mean, it's got to be millions. I mm-hmm. would think when you think. You know, a state like Missouri, the opening day of gun season, they put down nearly 100,000 deer. Now, not all of them are with interlock bullets, but you do that for a few years, it would add up. up Adds up, yeah. So the American whitetail, you can use it for obviously a lot of things other than whitetail, but we wanted to make the advertising such that there was it was a no-brainer because the you know the whitetail deer is the most hunted big game animal yeah. on the continent. Mm-hmm. Go to the store and there's the American whitetail ammo. There's, you know, no question, but obviously pigs, antelope, deer, and with the appropriate caliber and bullet weight, sufficient for elk at traditional range as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 300 wind mag, you know, and what do they put in there? Like a one, 165, 165 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah. hundred deer or elk round. 180 grain interlock behind the shoulder of an elk yeah. at 200 yeah. yards. It'd be 
it's money. Been, been used for years. Yep. Yeah, a, a classic. And that American Whitetail, when we came out with this, gosh, you know, it's what so I think we came out with that line in 2015 or 14, maybe something like that. <sighs> yeah, it was it was that time frame. I don't remember ex- the exact year. But. A lot of those American Whitetail ammo uh, was in the custom line, and they kind of pulled from that custom line to build up this American Whitetail yeah. lineup of cartridges, bullet weights, and uh, again, you put the good propellant in there. We're always using Hornady brass, so you get good brass in there, and it's just a, a no-brainer. If you're looking to do some traditional range hunting and you want accuracy and consistency, yeah. American Whitetail, yeah. no Can't questions go wrong. asked. Yep. So kind of shifting gears a little bit, we've talked about some kind of general purpose type ammo, if you will, and I guess the black line of ammo transcends that a little bit, but I want to talk now about you know, we've got a line of, not a line, we've got a group of lines of ammo that are a little more specific, you know, where we really cater to a very specific platform or a very specific purpose. And the, one of those is lever evolution. You know, Dave Emery, our senior ballistic scientist for, gosh, he was here for 20 some years. Uh, he really did a a wonderful job, uh, assisting with the bullet development and the propellant line. Uh, that we use in that lever evolution and it is designed specifically for those lever action guns and a lot to talk about there so let's let's get into lever evolution yeah well i think we should start with the i mean you mentioned dave and dave had lever guns and he liked to shoot lever guns who doesn't they're fun to shoot yeah so but it's not the bullets and the ammo is for the tubular magazines so you've got the the point of the bullet behind the cartridge in front of it and obviously the bullet is contacting the base of that cartridge and you don't want a pointed spitzer if you will bounce and recoil on the primer so we we uh we put a elastomer you know softer polymer tip in there so you don't that's mitigated but okay so it'll hit the primer but it's squishy for lack of a better term yep okay so that mitigates that um safety issue completely and but you gain all the benefits of having a um, polymer-tipped projectile yeah. in a lever gun. So you got a Spitzer, you know, conical ogive, more efficient bullet yeah. expansion, um, and you can get the bullets to expand at lower velocities because, as we know, most lever guns operate at lower pressures. Well, therefore, mm-hmm. the bullets aren't traveling as fast. So it, it was it's a, a win-win. It's a, it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of these bullets have boat tails, so you they get got, yeah, you, you got, get the the. Yeah, the low mock value or the low speed uh, BC benefit, they open up easier. So you get yeah. expansion yep. at longer range, and then you get drag benefits from that longer ogive. So, yeah, you yep. just took your 30, I, I like 30 30 because mm-hmm. it's a everybody, I don't say everybody, most people have one. Yeah. Um, have one or shot one. Yeah. Have one, and they're great to hunt with. I mean, you think about a, a deer stand in the woods, 30 30 lever gun, you know, 18, 20 inch barrel compact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fast action. Um, yeah. but that thirty thirty now went from, you know, used to be shooting 150, 70 grain flat point bullets and it was a hundred yards. I mean, maybe 150 yards. Mm-hmm. Now you can shoot a 30, 30 to 250. No, no problem. Uh, no yeah. problem. So it's just the, the whole line you know, from 45, 70, 30, 30, all of them is just tailored to working feed, feed function, extraction, everything in a lever gun beautiful a lot of work went into that bullet and it's uh it was it was huge now on the propellant side of things that lever evolution ammo is pushing uh non-traditional velocities in a lot of cases and they do that through the powder that's used and you know luckily yeah dave had a good relationship with some powder manufacturers and helped with chemistry and these propellants you get no increase in chamber pressure but an increase in velocity and that that right there is is amazing. So you get the drag benefits of the new bullet design, the safety of a tubular magazine, yep. and a little bit of added velocity. And yeah, like you said, Joe, you go from maybe 100, 150 yards to double that in a yep. lot of cases, yep. uh, which is just remarkable. And yeah, Dave was a, a uh, lever gun enthusiast to say the least. Um, yep. I do want to stop right there though and give a, uh, a kind of a listener's note. If you want more information on the Lever Evolution line of propellants that we use and the Superformance stuff, we just posted a podcast here recently about internal ballistics, and we talk about propellant and the chemistry, and we talk about powder progressivity and how things can 
uh, increase velocity without increasing pressure. So if you're looking for a little bit more of an in-depth answer on how that lever revolution line achieves those velocities without extra pressure, go check that episode out. Uh, senior ballistician Jaden Quinlan outlines that for us and does a phenomenal job of making it understandable. So yeah. that we was sh- We should dive in on the lever gun, though. We that the Because of the cartridges and bullet weights it's offered in, if the customer is wondering, we have your antelope deer, mm-hmm. you know, that type of stuff, but we go clear up into... 444, 4570. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big stuff. Big stuff. Big stuff. That yeah. you are more than capable of hunting elk, bears, bears you know, black bears, moose. That, moose. So yeah. I've, I've even talked to guys on the phone. They're they're going to Alaska. Their they're guide, their backup gun's a, a 444 Marlin or a 450 Four, Marlin, Marlin. Something, you know, a big, big lever gun that, that is in case they encounter a big gnarly grizzly bear or something mm-hmm. like that. So that's a yeah, good point. And I would say in that vein, you know, Ruger just recently released the the ruger built marlin yeah. in 4570 and i'm a little biased and in my extremely biased opinion i think our 4570 lever evolution ammunition with the 325 grain fdx i think that really owns the 4570 hunting market uh from a from a use standpoint i see that used. you know when you go hunting somewhere and you see you know what people are using or you go into a, st- a store and you you see ammo on the shelf i'm always you know, just keeping an eye out, and I see of available 4570 ammo, that 325 FTX is really, it's out there, and it's in extremely high use, and obviously it's like hitting things with a lightning bolt. <laughs> it's a 450 diameter, yeah. 325 grain bullet. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely huge. And uh, yeah, it's a good point that we go from the the medium, you know, medium and, and kind of big game type most use case all the way up into those really big cartridges and i guess another point to that was we were talking lever evolution ftx bullets as the lead core bullet but we have a monolithic i was gonna component to that so uh you know we've done uh we've talked about bullet performance uh a bunch but the monolithic bullets are known for penetration tough yeah they are they're tough rugged so Kind of walk us through what you see the differences in terminal performance of a monolithic bullet versus a traditional lead core bullet. So the, to me, and I, I want to, I want to hear what some of your customer feedback is, Matt, but on the development, you know, design side or whatever, the monolithic bullet gives you the unparalleled performance at close range, high velocity. Mm -hmm. A bullet is going to work. It's going to work at 200 yards too, but it's going to work great at 20 yards. Okay. So it gives you, if you're hunting in the, brush or timber or whatever and you may encounter that what we call point blank or close shot that monolithic is going to be awesome yep because there's nothing it's a monolithic it's solid copper it's tough yep. it can handle bone whatever you hit it's going to handle it yep. yeah yeah i guess for me from you know from a customer service standpoint i always try to spin it as you know because there's seems like there's two different thought processes on blood trailing you know some oh, guys sure. some guys want to pass through and some guys don't and so that's, and especially, you know, the East Coast guys that are hunting in thick wooded areas and stuff like that, and they have those very close range shots. Uh, a traditional lead core bullet might shed more of its weight and not make it through the other side of that animal. Okay. Well, if okay, you gonna... want a pass through shot, so you have blood pumping out both sides of that animal and you want a blood trail, that's where the, the monolithics, that's where I, 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 as if I'm making a recommendation, that's where I'm sending them to the market. Yeah, it's what the side. customer wants. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got something for everybody. And I think that's really neat that the monolithic bullets are getting their, their credit that if you're in a lead restricted area, great, use the, mm-hmm. you know, non-lead bullet. But if you're not in a lead restricted area, these monolithic bullets don't leave anything on the table. And in some instances yeah. they gain you stuff and like an- yeah, another layer to that too, that I, now that I think about it is some guys they're hunting small tracts of land and they need oh, yeah. that animal to die in his steps, in his foot tracks, shoulder, high shoulder shots. Like or um, monolithic bullets, yeah, it, it's gonna just destroy whatever it comes encounter with, and that bull, that deer, animal, whatever is dead in its tracks. Yeah, that's so. that's a good point. High shoulder shots, I find myself favoring those as well because of the mm-hmm. hydrostatic shock, and you disrupt the central nervous system, and you can kind of incapacitate them pretty pretty darn quickly, quickly. In, in most cases. And you do get that exit hole because those monolithic bullets they'll go through two shoulders, mm-hmm. which is impressive to say the least. And yeah, you talk about that, you know eastern hunting uh not just eastern but anywhere where you are hunting dense woods uh yeah the shot distances probably aren't that great but the the challenge of the hunt is incredible because 
just locating the animals is tough. And then, yeah, sure. you, you know, if they get into that thick timber, sometimes there's no finding them. So, yep. uh, yeah, I'm glad we brought that up. The monolithic bullets, the uh, monoflex available in the lever evolution line. And uh, that line of ammo just been a home run for us uh, since its release. And a lot of R&D went into that one. If you own a lever gun, That's that the is ammo. the ammo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no way around it, yeah, which nope. is yeah. which is great. And we're in the business of solving problems, and, and that is Absolutely. a problem solver. Absolutely. So staying in line with that kind of uh, specific type of ammo or something that's a little bit more boutique or catered to, uh, Joe, you mentioned shooting semi-automatic for, for, for youth or anybody that's recoil sensitive or just wants an enjoyable shooting experience. Well, we have a line of ammo we call Custom Light that was specifically designed, as the name would imply, to be reduced recoil. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to sacrifice on the terminal performance, but you know, not everybody wants to, wants to well, let alone can, handle some of the heavier recoil with the bigger cartridges, or any cartridge for that matter. But you know, maybe you hunt deer once or twice a year. This is the firearm you have. You, know, you want to cut the recoil out of it? We have custom light. So yeah. how did we approach custom light and what kind of calibers are offered? So we were looking for a meaningful reduction in recoil. And there's two ways that you do that. Bullet weight. And then the powder, the gases that are escaping the barrel. So obviously propellant. So if you could, but as you said, you brought up a super good point. We don't want to um, sacrifice any terminal performance. So the way you marry those up is if you reduce the bullet weight a little bit, reduces recoil, reduce the charge weight. Therefore, you can bring the speed and the pressures down a little bit. Then that lighter bullet still works great because you slow it down a little bit. You're not crowding it as hard. Yeah. So now you kind of... Do your work there and then test it, obviously, and stuff. But you, you get that reduced recoil without sacrificing any other performance, and it is fabulous in those bolt guns. I mean, I I pick on like a, I think a three hundred eight or thirty out six is good because everybody has. They're so prevalent. Two seventy, oh, yeah. yeah. they're yep. everywhere. So dad's got a thirty out six that he hunts with, and his son or daughter got old enough to hunt and showing it wants to hunt. Well, maybe he can't go get another gun or doesn't you know have that ability or whatever yeah, or so there's they, some cool factor to hey i'm using my grandpa's gun or yeah whatever. or yeah or yeah. that could play into it so that's what that's what uh spawned that if you will is look there's all these people out there that want to use a gun or have to use a certain firearm for hunting we need to offer ammo for the the youth or the spouse or whatever mm-hmm. it was that wants to use that firearm for hunting and it actually i've used it with my family and it actually works really really good i mean it's it's what we say it is. Yeah. I think the, the key to that is, uh, so you, yeah, go light for caliber on the bullet, go with a faster burning propellant and a lower yeah. charge weight. But what makes that all work terminally is that we top it with an SST, right? So the SST similar to an interlock, but what are we looking at difference wise that makes that work better at those reduced velocities? Well, one would say first off the polymer tip, Yeah, that's the, the, tip. the, you know, driving back into that cavity and initiating that expansion on impact. So, you know, that's, that's the, the main difference. Yep. So. And that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that polymer tip advancement in bullet technology is you get consistent upset every single time yep. because that polymer tip is driving rearward yep. and it will do that at lower velocity yep. than a, you know, a lead core bullet, let's say. Right. Um, so they yeah, at the reduced speeds and the slightly lighter bullets, those SSTs are going to open up easier because it shares the interlock ring as the interlock and it also has a, a tapered and skived jacket mm-hmm. yep. uh, but with that polymer tip you get that quicker expansion um so yeah for recoil sensitive shooter or in just anybody who likes to pull the trigger and doesn't want to get beat up yep. you know mm-hmm. i've i've sighted in some buddies rifles and preston sitting over here behind the camera one time had us sight in his friends 270 for a upcoming elk hunt and it was brutal. I mean, brutal. Like it's not. It's two seventy. It's not like I'm shooting a three seventy five H and H or something. But just the configuration of the rifle is a traditional wood stock, yeah. full house, hundred and thirty grain loads. Shooting it from the prone. I mean, just eating that recoil. It was like, <laughs> man, I'm not into that. I'm not into and then that. you know you can still get that performance that you're looking for, but just cut that recoil out of it. it just makes it better for everybody. Well, and they shoot well too. Yeah, because yeah. of the reduced there. pressure. Yeah, the accuracy is mm-hmm. really good. And that, to me, that's paramount. If you're hunting with a new 
person, a mm-hmm. new shooter, new hunter, yeah. make sure that system shoots great because you can't be questioning the system. You have that, 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 that person has to know that where I point this thing, it's going to go. Yep. Well, and, and, and it has to be an enjoyable experience Absolutely. too. And if they're having to eat a bunch of recoil, like there's no better way to, for me, you know, I've got three young kids to get them a, uninterested in hunting or shooting at all is to make them just go out and just pound the snot yeah, out of them with a the gun teeth. that they don't, they don't, yeah. they don't want to shoot. They're going to flinch or yeah, they're just nope. not going to yep. want to do it. And so a custom line, that's just what a, what a good way to make it an all around experience for a, a new hunter Yeah, you know, and have them enjoy it and want to go do it again the next year and the year yeah. after that. That's so. a good point. And you know, when I look back at my past and me growing up hunting and shooting, I think I, I mean, my dad could have served me up a forty-five seventy with full house 405s doing 2,000 feet per second, and I probably would have just ate it and kept moving, but he didn't. Uh, my first rifle was a two fifty seven Roberts shooting a 117 grain bullet, and it was super manageable for 11-year-old Seth to shoot. I killed almost everything I put the crosshairs on, and it was just a good shooting experience yeah. as, a, as a whole, but uh, yeah, you're introducing somebody... Yeah, the last thing you want to do is, yeah, mm-hmm. and you want them to practice. Shoulders. Yeah, you want yeah. them to shoot. You want yeah. them to practice. Get proficient. Yep, right on. And so, custom light, just a, a great line of ammo. Maybe not for everybody, but certainly we've got cartridges from I think two forty three uh, up to like WinMag. Up we? to yeah, three hundred yeah, WinMag and yeah, thirty out six is a yeah. great one. Three hundred eight, two seventy. Yeah. Uh, so our last stop before we change gears again into kind of our boutique ammo or something that's very very specific is on the big end and this is uh dangerous game ammo and when you're loading ammunition for the sole purpose of killing dangerous game animals that will kill you back if you're not careful um you know that that brings in a whole new weight on your shoulders of obligation for quality and consistency and performance you know i i have not had the opportunity to hunt dangerous game but somebody once explained it to me that yeah when you you know when you go out in the field and you're a passionate hunter yeah you're going out to you know you're going out in the deer woods and you're you're going to kill the deer or you're you know you're going to kill an elk and you know you you have that mentality but it's a little bit different when you're going dangerous game hunting when you're mm. purposefully seeking out something that could seek you out it's 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 just that little click past you know it's almost like going to war because you if you're going to pull the trigger you need to, you need to kill them and you need to kill them effectively mm-hmm. and uh, not to yeah sound morbid or take a uh, dive into killing but yeah this could this is very serious and uh, obviously the dangerous game line of ammo is something we do take very seriously yeah. and uh, not a big crowd that's that's looking for dangerous game ammo. But you have to have the best if that's what you're using. So, Joe, what's our dangerous game line of ammunition look like? Um, so there's a couple, a couple things. Obviously, the bullets. Mm-hmm. So there's two different bullets uh, used in dangerous game, and one of them is the dangerous game expanding and the dangerous game solid. And there, as the name implies, expanding is a uh, reverse drawn, uh, exposed lead, if you will, at the nose. It's it's truncated off, but and that bullet is going to expand. Uh, slowly 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 reliably um very tough uh, they're copper clad um steel jackets with with so interlock- steel jackets yeah there's if you will it's it's copper it's steel sandwich between copper so obviously okay. copper on the inside yeah. so we can work it with tools and then copper on the outside to uh for the protection of the dies in your barrel wow um and then a higher antimony lead so it's, it's super it's tough. just tough you really control the expansion with those um, components and then it's bonded right the the expanding Expand is, is bonded, is bonded, bonded as yeah. well so you add another layer of yeah. control so what's the bonding do for us uh, the bonding is the i'm going to call it a for lack of a better term a weld if you will okay. the weld of the copper and the the jacket together so it it is welded fused together it, wow. it cannot okay. mm-hmm. separate so Huge weight retention for an expanding yep. bullet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the only thing that comes off those projectiles is if when they open up and you encounter bone or heavy stuff, it'll scrub, if you will, a little bit of the lead, but you're talking a few percent. It's, mm. it's not yeah. very much at all. 10, 15 grains mm. worth of lead maybe. on a 500 yeah, grain maybe. bullet or something. Maybe. Um, so that's the expanding. 
on the the solid end that's as it implies it's a solid if you will but we make ours again out of copper clad steel heavy jackets i forget the thickness but i want to say 80 100 thousandths almost an eighth of an inch of steel mm. yes <laughs> it's so thick enough you can almost subs- measure it on a on a ruler it's substantial okay um and then that uh bullet is constructed so the the front of the bullet is completely encased or cased steel solid so fmj if you will but mm-hmm. we take the back end and roll it around a hard lead core so you you simply have a a monolithic solid bullet and those are designed for no expansion uh penetration is everything and then punching through bone skull whatever yeah. it is usually for follow-ups or elephants or stuff like that um and then the the propellants in the ammo obviously it goes without saying you've already mentioned the cases and the primer top quality um but the propellants are designed a lot of these uh cartridges are designed and built for doubles oh double rifles okay. double rifles so you have the regulation uh, comes in so the, the they want the bullets to to regulate or the rifle or ammo to regulate at the 50 yards or 20 yards or 100 yards whatever it is so that the, the two barrels are pointing Pointed. at the same spot and yep. your ammo the propellants were picked and developed and designed to make sure that those doubles regulate so they wow. shoot very well hmm. yeah, that's something i didn't quite appreciate for the dangerous game stuff but yeah if you've got a side-by-side barrel and you're staring down a really upset animal. Well, absolutely. You want the bullet to go where you... The second one's got to go where the first go. one. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, so those, are, those are the biggest the biggest things. Do those bullets share the same profile then? They're exactly... Other than their construction, on the one inside. reverse... Yeah, yeah. They are exactly the same external shape. Okay. And that would, again, to regulation, accuracy, follow-up shots. So let's say you shoot a soft, we say soft, but an expanding bullet. And then you follow up with a solid, mm-hmm. those two bullets hit the same point, point of, impact, of impact, point of aim, yeah. because they're the same, okay. the same shape, same weight, construction so, material. Yes. Ultra premium line of ammo. Matt, do you see customers calling in that are getting ready to go on a dangerous game hunt? Are they doing what Joe just said, where they're, excuse me, they're stacking, expanding, or solids, or going solids first? How do you see that playing out? You know, that, that market, like you started out with this, is it's a very niche market. And so those guys, they have their rifle, you know, they're upwards of 10 15 or more thousands of dollars for yeah they've got the really nice ones and these are guys that have gone to africa year after year after year they have everything in place they you know they're pretty well they know exactly what they want and what they're going to use but yeah pretty much they're going to do an expandable on a solid okay and thought there you get you get the expanding bullet first is what i would do having Mm -hmm. never done it i would want the expanding bullet i want to transfer energy uh because that energy transfer can disrupt other things and then my follow-up shot, I would want something that's going to absolutely blow through anything I put it yep. put it on. Yeah, I, I mean, in or sidebar to this, but when I first started here and I was in maintenance, I worked on the new the new machine we did the bonding with, and I you know wired it and everything like that. But Mike Jensen, who's been on the podcast before, oh, yeah. was kind of the R and D guy for this, and you know he showed me pictures of the wax blocks they'd shoot with those bullets and just how they kind of in blow up and inflate. He said this this would be a a bad day for anything for anything but and just that's 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 the neat thing about being in tech being able to sh- kind of show some of the, or share some of that backstory with our customers just to kind of intrigue them even even more if they're on the edge of oh well i you know i'm, I'm i've used a partition or a, a acubon or something yeah, like that which are all great bullets yeah hey how about this and this is here's some of the things we've seen and this is some of the experiences guys here who have used them have have what the the what they've yeah. done with them and so that's kind of neat that's you know from a customer service standpoint you just add another yeah there's value there yeah Yeah, that yeah hopefully and we've talked about this a bunch but hopefully people can hear stuff like that and then and take it to heart that we are just a a literal team of hunters and shooters we yeah we we come to work so that we can take vacation and go hunting (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh yeah that's uh that's uh all jokes aside that's that's serious (laughs) that is uh all right, so that was you know kind of a dive into our more really specific and, and slightly nuanced but individual types of ammo for specific purposes. Now to spread that paintbrush back on a little thicker, I want to take a look at kind of the last three lines of ammo that I want to talk about, and I'm going to call those our premier or our premium lines of rifle ammo. And we've got three lines that I want to talk about that are kind of in this vein. And the first one I want to talk about is Superformance. Um, you know, the name is kind of cool and it's got the hot rod cartridge with the flames and the headers coming out and the big blower, uh, 
some you know some marketing says there uh but this kind of relates back to not kind of it does relate back to talking about dave emery and helping a powder manufacturer and working in some chemistry that makes ammo go faster without an increase in pressure and so uh this is kind of a, a premier line of ammo for us um joe talk us through the line of superformance so superformance is unique in my opinion because it it offers I think it offers some things that not everybody, you know, sees. Most people uh, on the surface, they see 100 more feet or 200 feet or 150, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And that goes, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, if I can increase the, the same bullet going 100, 200 feet per second faster, my point blank range is increased by X amount. Mm-hmm. So that just makes sense as a hunter. I can aim, you know, hold hair, if you will, or aim right on at further ranges. Another thing that it does uh, that I think is super cool is earlier we touched on monolithics with lever guns. Yep. So now we take, uh, we load different bullets in superformance, but one of the, the areas that I think it shines the brightest is the monolithic CX bullets coupled with the superformance speed. Yeah. Because yep. the mono, we've always been, it's always been known that the monolithics like speed to work. The faster they're going, the better they work. They open up better. Penetrate, uh, penetrate yep, better. Yeah. All of those, the wound cavities are bigger. Everything is, is just better. Mm-hmm. So now you take the progressivity of the propellants and, you know, the, the pushing on the bullet, uh, longer in the barrel to get it to go faster without increasing the peak pressure. You do that to a monolithic bullet. Now you have everything. You got the trajectory, you have downrange energy, bullet terminal performance. You yep. increased it. You didn't decrease it. Yep. Yeah. So that part there is just awesome when you when you couple when you marry those things together so we also load some other bullets you know some ssts and stuff in there which is great don't i'm not knocking those at all Mm -hmm. they for for hunting what we talked about earlier when you want to hit something hard drop it knock it down you know an sst and a superformance load is going to um, depart the most energy of probably anything we have yep that's a good point that so we load the Superformance ammo, like you mentioned, with CX, which is our monolithic bullet, and SSTs. And we, we did touch on SSTs, but an SST at a really high rate of speed, like you said, it's going to impart that energy of an expanding bullet into the animal. And, you know, we'll do a separate podcast here sometime about terminal performance, but without getting too deep into it, that temporary wound cavity, if you're disrupting electrical activity in the central nervous system, you can you can shut that off even if it's temporarily and that's when you get an animal that literally falls yes. in their in their tracks not to mention the permanent wound cavity that you blow through the vitals the heart the lungs and then you get the temporary wound cavity and that material inside an animal can only expand so much and as it absorbs that energy transfer it's expanding and it'll lacerate and yep. incredibly devastating and you know the old saying goes speed kills mm-hmm. and when you're talking high performance rifle hunting speed does kill you get a dramatic energy transfer and that is plain yeah. effective but yeah. like you mentioned that cx bullet all bullets are married to velocity for performance but none of them in a more close marriage than the monolithic CX. bullets that are cx and yep. velocity yep you almost want them you want them going faster because oh, they yeah. need that they need that velocity on impact to get them to open up and yeah yep what better way than superformance right well, yeah, that's a, uh, a good point. The, the impact velocity is, is key. An SST, that'll impact, or that'll open up down to 17, 1750. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The CX takes 2,000 feet per second yeah. to get yeah. that caliber and a half, so very important. One thing you guys didn't mention that it's almost going to be a joke here by the end of the, our first year of podcasting, but I'm a short barrel fanatic. Uh, put a suppressor on it. Cut that barrel back. If you're thinking 24, go 22. If you're thinking 22, go 20. Uh, the superformance propellant, because of how progressive it is, actually lends itself really well to short barrels. And so you get that, that added speed with the reduced barrel length. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking at cartridges like you know a 300 Winchester short mag, for example, with 165 grain CX and superformance propellant, I mean, that is a... Your utilitarian 20, North America your magnum, kill anything your you magnum want. barrel length performance in your twenty inch barrel absolutely and and, and with the more <clears throat> advancements in sound suppression everybody uh, I mean sure everybody wants a suppressor at least I mean the three guys sitting here yeah I've got one in suppressor jail still but it's coming yeah and so that's it's just one of those things it just it's just better 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 
Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, and the superformance line really lends itself to yeah those shorter barrels, suppressed or not. Uh, but then in any barrel length, you do get the added speed. We mm-hmm. top it off with Premier bullets, the CX and the SST. Now speaking of CX bullet, uh, we have a line of ammo that is built solely around the CX bullet, and uh, this one is really the take anywhere in the world type of ammo and i'm talking about hornady outfitter and if you're going to put the name outfitter on a box of ammo it better live up to it so uh joe walk us through what makes outfitter ammunition so the outfitter is your conventional i'm going to call it standard conventional velocities and loads and propellants yep and we did that for a couple of reasons first and foremost for temperature stability Okay. So obviously we want to take it to any environment in the world. It may be zero and it may be a hundred. Mm-hmm. And obviously there's going to be some performance trade-offs that happen in those, but you use a propellant that is stable in all those. The other thing is a nickel case. So okay. people have probably seen a tarnished brass case after a while, depending on the environment you're in, mm-hmm. you nickel plate them and that goes away. Okay. So your, your case is impervious to the environment and then we seal that ammunition. So we waterproof it. On both ends or just both the end, primer? Primer and bullet mouth. Oh, so wow. now you have a, you, you have a environmentally yeah. impervious, you know, impervious, impervious round of ammunition. So hot, cold, wet, dry, snow, doesn't matter. The, the round of ammunition, the performance stays the same. So that's the biggest thing. And then we talked about CX earlier and we top it off with a CX. You can use a CX at two yards or 200 yards. Yeah. Doesn't, or now that with matter. the CX compared to its predecessor, the GMX, we've got some features in there that help. One, it helps reduce the drag, but two, it makes the drag more consistent. And so, yeah, it's two yards to 200. Well, now you're getting one to 200 yards of extra, extra terminal sure. performance yeah. over a, a traditionally made monolithic bullet. Yep. Um, and we do that through a, a couple different ways, mainly the shape and the geometry and the depth of the grooves that are on the bullet coupled with the heat shield tip. Um, you know, those bullets are just phenomenal. And yeah, for yeah hunting in the backyard, to going halfway across the world to hunt something that you'll never get to go back to. If you have to hang your hat on a, a line of ammo, I'd go outfitter. Yeah. yeah if for the most yes, part. Yes. If you've got a lot of money tied up in a hunt. Yep. Time. Ep, yeah. I, money, time, or name it however. Resources. You, conditions. You have, yeah, to, everything, you yeah. have to have full confidence in your, in your ammo. And we do load those. We probably should let everybody know that we load those. Those start at like, I'm going to say 6.5. We load in cartridges. I think we do a 243 mm-hmm. in it with in an 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 in a yeah. GMX. Yeah, we go that low. But the, the bread and butter of those is in that. Yeah. 6.5 to 30, 338. I mean, yeah. that's. Yep. Yeah. That's where we really deer, focused Deer in. and up game. Deer, deer up, size and yeah, up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we yeah. do a 243 all the way up to 375. Mm-hmm. Uh, 375 right. Ruger and 375 H and H. But like you said, the, the meat and potatoes is, you know, yeah, 6.5 up to, yeah, 300, 338. Yeah. Matt, how do you guide a customer through selecting outfitter over, you know, any other line of ammo that we have? Yeah. I mean, it comes down to, um, like the, where they're hunting at, you know, if it's a, they're going up in the mountains, you know, and it's September, October, November, you know, the conditions can change at the drop of a hat. And so snow, rain, all that stuff. If they're looking at that kind of, that kind of a out West hunt or, you know, mountain hunt, the, 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 the round being sealed on both ends and being impervious to moisture, that's, you know, that's the selling point, at least. And that's, you know, how mm-hmm. the most harsh use, that's that's where I'm going to steer them to is that outfitter line. You okay, know, and yeah. it's just really, like I said, it, when talking with guys, it's breaking down what they're doing, the distances they're comfortable to shooting at, and the conditions they're going to be hunting in. Yeah. So, well, and that, yeah, that transcends outfitter to, and it goes into every line of ammo. Yeah. yeah you break yeah. it down that way. One of the things that I used uh to explain this to to people who would ask and i I still use this analogy today uh, or this example today is outfitter ammo to me is almost like a pseudo insurance plan or a pseudo insurance policy where all right i've been training my butt off i've been sinking money into a fund my wife doesn't know about for a while (laughs) and after a lot of years of resources and dreaming and training and saving money, tags, whatever, points. you buy the tags and the points, I'm finally going on my British Columbia trip or what, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to do is, ha- is get up there and have a problem with, oh, you know, it's so humid up here and I was up here for long enough and this is my 
cases are gummy and they're starting to tarnish or whatever. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just that added little bit of insurance where if you're going somewhere, again, whether it's the backyard or a destination and you've got a lot of resources up into that, this is a no brainer. You don't even have to think about it because you will have to think about it less. The performance is going to be there. The terminal performance is unquestionable. And then you get that, that added insurance or that confidence that no matter what I take a spill off a horse and I just dump 20 rounds into a lake. I can, you know, or a stream or whatever, I can pick them up, dry them off, air them out or whatever. And I I can, they're, they're good to go. I'm going to be able to rely on them. So that's the outfitter line of ammo. Now I saved this one for last for a reason, because in my opinion, and again, I'm incredibly biased, even within our own products, I'm incredibly biased, but I really think our precision hunter is one of the most premier lines of rifle hunting ammo that we offer. And there are a bunch of reasons for that. I'm going to let Joe run with that one. But for me, that precision hunter line of ammo is just absolutely next level. It it, it is on another level for me. And uh, Joe, walk us through precision hunter. So I like the box and the label because Mm. it says it. Yeah. It's a plain gray box with Hornady on it with big white letters that says precision hunter. And that's pretty much... I mean, that, that's what's in that box. True to the words. True mm-hmm. to the words. You could, there's people that do it now, and I'm sure we'll talk about it. Yeah. There are people that, that shoot that ammo and win matches. They're shooting hunting ammo, winning, winning matches. So that, that says, that says the yeah. precision part of it. Yeah. And then the hunter is just the bullets, the ELDXs. Those took, I mean, those were, I say years in development. Obviously we brought them to market in a couple of years of focus development, but the behind the scenes lay in the groundwork to build a projectile and then be able to manufacture it in volume was years in development. Yeah. So the, the quality of that projectile, um, I mean, you're drawing a heavier jacket with a heavy high interlock in it and, you know, a heat shield tip, but everything has to be assembled correctly. So you get terminal performance at 50, you know, close range out to extended range. That's a tough nut to crack. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Um, but I mean, the proof's in the pudding. We sell a lot of that ammo. And I've, I, I'm with you, Seth. I've personally used this ammo on and bullets in a lot of different hunting situations. And I'm, I, I'm here to tell you it is awesome. It just flat out works day in, day out. And if I was going to, if I had to pick one, if you forced me to pick one round or one line of ammo that I had to hunt with, it would be Precision Hunter done. Yeah. can use it on whitetails in the woods, the fields, wherever you can take it to the mountains. You can take it to Alaska. You can take it to Kenya. You take it to Africa. It works and it is shoots so well in so many different guns and the trajectories. I and mean, we could talk, we could have a whole podcast yeah. on, you know, precision, precision hunter, hunter. But yeah. the thing is, is you have match grade hunting bullets loaded in premium ammo with the best propellants, the best cases, the best powder, and everything is loaded to accuracy consistent velocity temperature stability there wasn't any rock left unturned when this complete package of ammo was developed and you know yeah delivered matt can you second that or how do you feel with a a very very pointed yes i agree i'm i'm with joe and joe was saying if i had to pick one if i was forced to pick one line of ammunition that precision hunters and that's probably my from a you know for for customer recommendations the ELDXs yeah you can't match accurate hunting bullet and yeah. and you know this it's a whole nother can of worms you know but when we're talking about advancements in in rifles and optics and all of that sure. you're able to extend your ranges you know ballistics you know ballistic calculators wind meters everything you know that you see these guys taking with them on their hunts why not have a a round with a bullet that can reach out there yeah and but if if you have a Hornady Ford off Kestrel and precision hunter ammo and your rifle with a, with a scope that you can turn a turret or holdovers or whatever, mm-hmm. your lethality to, for you, it might be two, three, four, five, one. I don't care. Or yeah. It doesn't matter. Pick a range. Mm-hmm. Pick a range. Yep. You have upped your game just by shooting precision hunter. Yep. yep. Well, and that's, that's a force multiplier right there. If you can take, oh, I was shooting American whitetail. It does great. It's accurate. Shoots everything. Uh, now you can take, if you're, you know, doing enough training and you have the right weapon system and the right, uh, optic and everything. Now you just switch ammo and now from zero 
to instead of three, three fifty, now you're zero to whatever that range is, but it's mm-hmm. further than three yeah. or three fifty just by switching ammo. And that's remarkable. And I, I like I said, I've heavily biased, but for me, that is the numero uno, mainly because you can do anything with it, you know, and I'm I've shot Precision Hunter in a match. I definitely did not win the match, but that has nothing to do with the <laughs> ammo that I was shooting. But uh, I didn't give up any points because of it. You know, the 143 grain ELDX that's featured in our 6.5 Creedmoor and 6.5 PRC ammo, that is just the the pinnacle of performance, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And the, the reason I like it so much is, like I said, you can do anything. You got a shot. I shot a deer at 61 yards, one of the better whitetails I've ever shot. Uh, certainly the was the only whitetail I've shot on public land. Uh, pressed behind the camera here was was there for that one. Shot him at 61 yards. Obviously, it did great. Yeah, you fast forward, or yeah, fast forward a few years from there, and I've taken shots that uh, that I was really prepared for that were in excess of five or six hundred yards, and that bullet just every animal I've ever shot with an ELDX has taken a collective zero steps. Just uh, and I'm again, I'm a high shoulder blade shooter, mm-hmm. but you get that performance where I'm, I'll shoot one at 50, 60 yards, great even better i'd much prefer to do that but if there's an extended shot and i have the time and i'm watching the wind and i'm set up and everything's great and i have to take an extended shot i have the ultimate confidence in that ammo and to me confidence is one of those intangible things that is also a full force multiplier oh, yeah. if i am not confident in what i'm doing then i'm a little bit more apprehensive in doing it and one of the things i always like to do is do things at full throttle and uh when I'm confident about what I'm shooting, then everything is, yeah, I've sure. got it down to a system and I just feel good about it. Now, these ELDX bullets, they will expand down to 1600. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So an interlock and an SST, we're talking 17, 1750. Yeah. A CX, we're talking 2000. Well, that ELDX is 1600. I mean, that is way when out you, there. When Especially, you get a bullet yeah. that has. That's super, super sleek and has yeah. is ballistically efficient. That's. That's a ways. A, that's a long, <laughs> that's a long ways, 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 you know. And so, so. You, you mentioned, guys, that this is a match-accurate hunting bullet. And without going down a rabbit hole about the development of the ELDX, this bullet had to be terminal performance first. You, you, you know, we are not in the business of advocating hunting with bullets that have no means of controlled expansion, like a match bullet. Mm-hmm. So these bullets had to be hunting bullets first. But if you're going to call it precision... It has to be accurate. So we actually hold these bullets to the same accuracy standard as our match bullets. You get a bullet that's get all the external drag benefits that you mentioned, Matt, Mm -hmm. plus the accuracy of our match bullets coupled with the terminal performance. It's hard to get better than that. It is. It's a very good, very good thing. One thing, uh, Seth, as we've talked about all of these that, that I like, that I want people to know is because we may... in fairness to our customers looking at a catalog or a store shelf or whatever, it can be daunting being like, man, I've got, I shoot a 308. I can give buy American Whitetail. I can buy Precision Hunter or whatever. One thing that the customers, and I think you guys do a really good job of this, Matt, upstairs is telling people, look, what are you doing first? What's mm-hmm. the job to do? But then there may be one, two, three offerings that we make that are going to work for the, the tool for your job. So I would encourage the customer, like, look, if there's a couple different SKUs of ammo that you're comfortable using or you've talked to the techs or whatever, buy the, buy all of them you can, shoot them in your rifle and pick the one that shoots best. Yeah, buy, Coming, the, when buy you said that, When you said the confidence that comes back, you, the hunter, needs to have confidence in your system. So if you shoot all three and pick, you know, option B and it shoots the best in your rifle, rock and roll. Because yep. the the performance is, we've just talked about the performance and all yeah. those, the bullets and the powder stuff. Mm-hmm. We, we build them all for high performance, so... Yeah. Pick the one that shoots best in your gun and go have fun hunting. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah and do it confidently. I Absolutely. Can't, can't stress that enough. And I know I'm not alone in that, that man, when I'm, when I am rock solid in my training, my ability, the practice I've been doing on the range, uh, the ammo, everything the the optic and I lay down and you know, if I can get one step closer, I'm going to do it. But if this is as close as I'm getting, man, I feel nothing but supreme confidence when i lay down to shoot something yeah not to sound uh cavalier but that animal's as good as dead Mm because i know exactly where this bullet's about to go and you should do that yeah you owe i mean you owe it to the animal yeah yeah you should do yeah well and like i mentioned and i know we're all in the same camp i've been competing now for almost a decade in long-range competitions 
That has been my most enjoyable pastime in life uh, as far as hobbies go. Uh, if I can shoot an animal at two yards, great. If I can shoot them one step closer, I'll do that too. I'd Darn much right. prefer to get closer, but uh, just by getting the right rifle system, the right optic, the right range finder, uh, the right, you know, Ford off solution, the right bullet, the right ammo, it, it is just extends you. To, and, it all comes together. Yeah. It makes you that much more effective. So guys, that in my mind is rifle hunting ammunition from Hornady. Uh, is there anything else you want to mention about these specific, specific lines of ammo? Do we want to touch on the subsonic? Did we forget subsonic? We did. We wow. could touch, we could touch on it. I yeah, mean, we it, need it, to go back that whole line of ammo. <laughs> uh, we need to rewind. So w the subsonic line of ammo is really one of those kind of like our uh, custom light and our lever evolution where it's designed it's for a niche, a, it's a niche yeah. thing. Gosh, Matt, I'm I'm sorry I, I overlooked that one. So subsonic, that niche is subsonic. subsonic. Yeah. We talked about suppressors. Everybody's getting them. Everybody that doesn't have them wants one. Mm -hmm. And you get shorter barrels in the suppressor. Just shooting below the speed of sound is less recoil. It's less noisy. It's just fun. Mm -hmm. So what's the subsonic line of ammo? So the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that makes subsonic line of ammo work from a hunting, in my opinion, because if you're going to hunt, you got to have terminal performance. We hit on that before and we'll hit on it again. Mm -hmm. um, but those bullets are designed and intended to be used at subsonic velocities, 1050. 1100 feet per second, 11, 20, 30 is the sound barrier. So we load them at, you know, 1050, 1080. And those bullets are designed to work at that. And then they'll work clear down to like 800 feet per second, which in subsonic world, that's like 400 yards. Yeah. It's way <laughs> down range because they don't yeah. slow down very much. So anyway, the, the bullets are paramount in that. And then obviously the weight of the bullet and the propellant and the cartridge all has to be married together to make sure that it, that it works at subsonic velocities because a lot of times you've got to run at lower pressure so you don't push the bullet as hard so then you have to get run the gun the, the ammo has to fit yeah. fire function extract all of those things so subsonic is a unique um i'm going to call it fun ammo and yeah. very effective for you know shorter range hunting it's works great those bullets expand beauty they aren't going very fast so you can yep. make the bullet expand and open up and penetrate perfectly yeah, it, it yeah. is just fun. And we're just, and we're adding to that line, you know, I'd, uh, the 3030, I, I had a box of it and I ran it through my wife's lever gun and it would just made me giggle. Like, yeah. It was just fun. Cause you go from the lever evolution going supersonic and go to that and it's a 175 grain bullet and it's a it thumps it's hitting a, a AR 500 steel plate. It just about knocked it off the rack, you know, it's oh, just, yeah. and it's just no earmuffs, you know, it's just great. great, you know? Yeah. So. And, and like you guys had mentioned, that bullet, the Sub X bullet, designed specifically to operate and and provide terminal performance. So if you're hunting medium game, mm -hmm. you know deer, antelope, pigs, maybe mm -hmm. some black bear stuff like that, at traditional ranges, you know 100, 150 yards and in, these things will absolutely yeah. do well. Yeah. The only reason I would recommend not shooting further than that is uh, I'd mentioned this in the podcast that we did exclusively about subsonic. And much like my Aunt Gladys's Thanksgiving stuffing just sinks like a stone. I mean, it is <laughs> dense. And these things, they, yep. they fall off real bad. So getting bullet drop at those, you know, anything range past that's a little tough. But because they're not in supersonic flight, they don't lose a lot of velocity. So, yeah, for, for terminal performance, they just do such a phenomenal job. And again, the shooting experience is just great. So mm -hmm. one of the big things that... Uh, we need to mention when we're talking subsonic ammo for hunting is to check your local regulations uh, because some states have an, an arguably antiquated rules for subsonic hunting use. A great example is the 300 blackout. If you're shooting a 300 blackout rifle in the state of Nebraska, it has to have a certain amount of energy at 100 mm -hmm. yards. Well, we don't quite make it with subsonic ammo, but if you're shooting a 300 blackout pistol, Pistol regulations are different. That ammo is perfectly legal. Mm -hmm. And they're both, whether you're shooting a 16-inch rifle or an 8-inch pistol, honestly, they're both going to be absolutely devastating at 100 yards on a white-tailed deer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but a, a, again, another niche product. I Sorry for the listeners to backtrack to go into this niche again, um, but the subsonic line of ammo, can't believe we overlooked it because it is, of the ammo we have, it's 
like you said, you just giggled when you shoot mm-hmm. it. It puts a smile on your face. Yeah. And we talked about the 4570 earlier in the Lever Evolution. Man, you put a 4570 <laughs> subsonic through after running a tube of full house stuff. It's it's remarkable. Day and night difference. Yeah, it really is. But you're again not sacrificing you're the not, terminal yeah. performance, and you're that's giving anything up. That's cool. So now I think we gave the complete line of ammo. <laughs> uh, did we miss anything else? No. Awesome. Uh, well, then I've got questions for you guys because the listeners probably don't want to know. Maybe they do. I don't know. I want to know, and I want our listeners to know. Joe, we were talking before uh, the podcast recorded. You've got a big hunt coming up in like seven weeks once in a life for i mean it might be once in a lifetime you never know so real real quick what hunt is that and what line of ammo are you guys taking uh dropped off in the middle of nowhere alaska on a hill after a gigantic moose 300 prc 212 eldx i'm going to shoot the 190 uh outfitter as well okay and whichever whichever one shoots the best Mm -hmm. i mean if 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 Outfitter shoots very, very well, I'll probably shoot a 190 just because you are with bears and this and that. Yeah, and the monolithic and the, bullet with and the, the monolithic, penetration. Yeah. Yeah. And you're shooting a gigantic animal. I mean, those things are huge. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's great. So, Joe, going to gonna see which, uh, which load the rifle shoots better, but that Outfitter with a 190CX. Really, everything we just described about the Outfitter line of ammo a few minutes ago lends it's itself to taking it to, to exactly yeah. what you just said. So, that's great. Now, for... The not once in a lifetime hunt. I know you and your family, your children and your wife get out there and absolutely get after the mule deer. What are you shooting for mule deer? Um, so the, the kids this year, my youngest one will get to hunt in Missouri. She's old enough. So we'll use, uh, probably a little six arc. Okay. And a little gas gun. Precision Hunter 103. Yep. 103. Absolutely. Um, and then the other girls get a hunt in Nebraska. They're old enough. So I think they're going to use, uh, a six creed and a six, five creed. Okay. Loaded with uh, 143s, okay. uh, ELDXs. So the Precision Hunter in, in both of those loads, because I've got, you know, guns built up that fit them well and, yeah. and recoils. We'll put suppressors on. It's yep. very manageable. Cool. And then I don't know, uh, I don't know that I'm going to, I'm going to be the guide this year. Okay. So That's all right. Much. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what Christina's going to hunt. She, I don't think she's decided yet. Okay. Obviously, obviously she's going to hunt. Moose. moose but is she taking the 300 prc as well just one gun kind of yep. utilitarian 300 prc awesome so sounds like precision hunter and outfitter for the teeland family matt what do you shoot um i'm a i'm an eldx guy so i don't have any big big game hunts I, i'm not going to alaska just going to stay around home and i've got a, a good buddy of mine that has a big piece of property right on the the south loop river mm. and they are overrun with whitetails so we go there and cold does Okay. And so that that's a late antlerless season. And so that's, uh, and I'm just, I, I'm pretty much the guide. So I'm taking my kids and, and getting them on their deer and, and making sure they're lined up and that they've got a good bullet in front of that cartridge to, to do the work. So precision hunter, precision hunter, hunter field family. DXs. Yep. Okay. Well, all the way. I think, uh, I've got a few, few hunts, uh, none that I'm more excited about than hunting mule deer in Nebraska with my dad. I do it every year for, this might be year six now. And it's just something that we look forward to every year. And we, uh, have such a great time doing it. And there's no questions asked. Is your dad, taking. is your dad hunting? Again oh yeah. This? Okay. Yep. Yeah. That I could not have a permit. I consequently, I do have a, a permit, but it will likely go unfilled. The, the focus is to get, to get dad on a, on a decent mule deer buck and it's precision hunter. No mm. questions asked. And again, because. Man, if we pop over a hilltop in the sand hills and there's one at the bottom of the hill at 45, 50 yards, great. If we got to shoot across a big valley at, yeah, three, four, five hundred, Precision Hunter will do that too. So yeah. we're, uh, we're taking the Precision Hunter and uh, with any luck, we'll have a successful hunt. For the rest of the hunts that I have uh, for work and for my personal hunting, I think I'm, I don't have anything where I wouldn't take Precision Hunter. Yep, mm. I think, you know, for... The hefty majority of the work that I do, man, that precision hunter just is is uh, the bee's knees. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hopefully the listeners got something out of this to help dissect through our product lineup. Obviously, we have much more products than this in our ammo line, but I wanted to focus this up on the you know medium and large game, North America mainly, uh, and what 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 you can do to sift through the ammo. And Matt, you said it best when I don't know how you put that you. 
what are you doing, where are you going, and how far do you want to shoot? Yep. Yep. You run those two, those three things uh, through your mind, and then we've got a piece of ammo for you that will will hit all three boxes. And if you still can't figure out what you want or you want somebody's opinion, give us give us a call. Cool. Yep. Absolutely. What's what's the number to get a hold of you guys? Uh, 800-338-3220. 3220, Press extension three. That'll shoot you right upstairs to tech. All those guys hunt, shoot, reload. Most yep. of them shoot competitively in some fashion and can guide you through exactly the criteria that you should be looking at to select the right ammo for the job. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Well, I'm giddy with excitement for hunting season. <laughs> it didn't get any better. It significantly got worse through this uh, conversation, but uh, appreciate you guys coming on with me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Hopefully you found that helpful, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.